welcome to the 19th uh, annual group exhibit of hydrogen fuel cells at Hanover Messe. Uh, those walking in the aisles, if you'd care to join us for a coffee or a tea while we get into our discussion, we will be discussing energy storage, the case for hydrogen, with Chief Executive Officer uh, Dr. Graham Cooley from ITM Power. Uh, Dr. Cooley has 25 years within the energy storage um, industry with uh, experience developing uh, fuel cells, batteries, and supercapacitors. Uh, please welcome Dr. Cooley to the stage. Hi. Hello. Can you uh, maybe start with a, a brief explanation of uh, what ITM does and your history? Sure. So um, at ITM, we're interested in making hydrogen from renewable power. So that means uh, connecting um, electrolyzers uh, to fluctuating intermittent power supplies and making hydrogen, um, both by coupling directly to renewable power, but also by balancing the grid using electrolyzers. And, and um, we um, make fully packaged hydrogen energy systems that are CE marked um, and ready to buy. Perfect. So what is the need uh, for energy storage, in, in your opinion? Okay, um, <clears throat> I think um, uh, discussions around energy storage have been had for many years now. Um, and, um, you know, if you can store power, then it is... Um, is it better for me to use this? Okay, I think you can hear me better now. If you can store power, then you can optimise the network. Um, what we've, what's happened over the last five to ten years um, is that we have now have more and more renewable power on the network. Um, and if you look at wind power, for instance, um, it's very difficult to schedule into a conventional power network. Um, and so what you really need is an energy storage solution. Uh, you need an energy storage solution that's long term. Um, you know, we have many solutions at the uh, two to six hour level. Uh, you can use batteries, flow cells, pumped hydro. Um, what the industry has been looking for is very long-term energy storage. That means energy storage that can span the fluctuations in wind power, which are probably in the days, but also the fluctuations across of energy requirements across seasons and even annually. And that's what you can do with hydrogen. And that's why I think hydrogen is so significant um, for energy storage, because hydrogen is effectively an energy vector. So, in terms of hydrogen, um, what is the viability of it today um, for energy storage? What is the um, economic um, value of it? Okay, so the economic case. I mean, what we do um, is, uh, is we use electrolyzers coupled to renewable power. And we, we um, deploy systems that do two things. One is uh, store the hydrogen in tanks so that it can be used for refueling stations. Um, that's for hydrogen vehicles. But the purest form of energy storage with hydrogen is using the hydrogen from electrolysis and putting it straight into the gas grid. So, so let me describe that, that form of energy storage. First of all, we're interested in PEM electrolyzers. Um, the reason PEM electrolyzers are interesting um, is that they uh, can be cycled very quickly. So in other words, they can be turned on and off very quickly. And in fact, all the way on and all the way off. So it, it's a very flexible device. Um, you can also make uh, PEM electrolysis that's self-pressurizing. Um, and actually the gas grid um, has a pressure, maximum pressure in the high pressure network all over Europe of around 80 bar. Some countries are at 70 bar, some at 80 bar. So we make electrolysis equipment that can um, uh, follow the fluctuations of renewable power or balance the grid. So on one side, and that's response time. They're very, very rapid response devices. You can turn them on and off in one second. Um, and they're self-pressurizing to 80 bar, which is what you need for the gas grid. So it's a direct transducer between the power network, which doesn't have any energy storage on it, and the gas grid, which has lots of uh, storage on the gas grid. So let, let me give you a bit more about the, the rationale. So we know we have to be, in the UK, we know we have to be sub two second response because that's the payment structure given by our national grid. It's called frequency control by demand management 
and you get paid if you can respond in less than two seconds. Okay. In terms of the gas grid, um, in the UK, um, the gas grid is three times the size in terms of energy that the power grid is. So we have 350 terawatt hours flowing through um, the electricity grid annually, um, one, uh, just over 1,000 terawatt hours through the gas grid. But the gas grid has all also got a considerable amount of storage. Um, so we have 15 days of short-term storage in the UK and offshore about 70 or 80 days of storage. In Germany, there's far more uh, mid-term energy storage. There's the uh, uh, gas storage in Germany, there's uh, over 100 days uh, uh, of, um, of short-term storage. Um, hydrogen's completely miscible with methane. So you put it into the gas grid um, and, and it mixes with the methane. And, and what you have to do is use a compliant mixing plant to put the hydrogen into the gas grid. So that's what we interface with. So what would you say are the challenges and barriers um, with the hydrogen into the energy storage? Um, in, in, in terms of internationally, putting the hydrogen into the grid, um, what challenges do you have to overcome? Okay, there's, um, in every country there's legislation about how much hydrogen you can put into the gas grid. Um, so, um, let's, uh, again, if I take the UK example, in the UK we used to have a gas grid based on town gas. And in that case we had 60% of the gas in the gas grid was hydrogen. Uh, so it's, it's a very well tested network. Um, for very high hydrogen content. Um, in fact, uh, in many countries in Asia, um, the gas grid is based on either syngas, which is made from natural gas, or coal, or other fuels. So uh, there's quite a precedent for having very high concentrations of hydrogen e in gas grids. Um, it, all over Europe, we have percentages of around 5, 6, 4%. Um, as the amount you can put into the gas grid and still be compliant. Okay, the reason for this is that hydrogen has a higher flame speed than methane. Um, and actually, when hydrogen finds its way to a burner, such as a cooker or a boiler in someone's house, it has to be below a limit where it doesn't affect the flame speed. Now, that's called the Dunton limit, and it's around 12%. So you can put up to 12% of hydrogen into natural gas and you, the devices in people's houses won't notice. And, and it, it, it's all about staying below that limit. But there is, a different, there is different legislation all over Europe about the amount of hydrogen you can put into the gas grid. And, and I believe in Germany there's different legislation uh, locally in different federal states. Would you be able to uh, discuss and explain um, some projects that ITM is involved with in terms of the hydrogen for energy storage? Sure. Um, so we have a, a project in the UK um, with um, National Grid, which is our uh, uh, main uh, transmission grid operator. Um, National Grid own both the um, uh, electricity grid and the high pressure gas grid. Um, so uh, it's, with it, it's with National Grid, SSE, who are the third largest generator um, in the UK, and Shell, um, looking at the legislation and the effect of putting hydrogen into the UK gas grid. It's called the Grid Gas Project, um, and uh, there's a website, um, actually, uh, gridgas.co.uk. So um, that's an important project for us. It also leads to the first major power to gas plant um, in the UK. Um, we have another project with SSE and Scotia Gas Networks, um, which is about methanation. So let me just explain methanation if I can. Um, if, um, if you um, want to put hydrogen into the gas grid, um, the other whole strategy is reacting the hydrogen with CO2 and making synthetic natural gas. And in which case, so long as there aren't any impurities in there, um, there's, um, there's no legislation to the amount that you can put in. It's equivalent to putting a very clean biogas into the gas grid. Um, so we, we work on that project. That was funded by DEC, which is our main government department for energy. 
So since your time here last year, um, other than these projects that you've just discussed, is there any new um, initiatives or any um, new announcements that have happened that you'd want to discuss? Um, any changes? Sure. Um, okay, so we, we um, sold our first um, uh, major piece of plant in Germany to the Tugu Group, um, and that's um, uh, one third of a megawatt plant uh, for power to gas. Um, it's going to be sited with uh, Mainova um, in Frankfurt. And, and again, we're looking at um, the development of um, the grid balancing part, looking at compliant mixing plant, um, and looking at the whole strategy of putting hydrogen uh, um, into the gas grid. So that was a, a, a very significant project for us. Um, so in, what is your goal for the next uh, five years with ITM? What is your uh, big vision for ITM? Okay, so the a big vision really in two areas. What, one is the rollout of hydrogen infrastructure, refueling infrastructure for um, hydrogen vehicles. Um, and in that area, we work um, with the major gas companies and most of the major um, OEMs um, on the on UK H2 mobility, which is a, a, a UK government project to plan the rollout of refueling stations in the UK. And, and we're in the second phase of that. The end of that phase, which is, um, w will be in about nine months' time, is to actually um, implement the, the first rollout of hydrogen refueling stations in the UK. Uh, so that's a significant uh, project for us. So that part of the vision is about, uh, uh, about infrastructure. And then power to gas. Well, uh, my belief is that um, there will be a huge requirement in Europe for energy storage. Um, and um, I think power to gas is the only way of storing um, renewable power for the very long term. So I think that's a massive vision. Perfect. Um, I'd like to ask the audience, is there any questions that anybody would like to ask uh, Dr. Cooley? Anybody? Okay. Uh, perhaps you can answer a question for me and some people in the audience that may not uh, be as technical and may not understand, but what is the difference between the, the grid gas project and the power to gas project? Can you go into some like differentiating points? And talk? Exactly the same. We just gave it a name to identify it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining me. I appreciate it and for your time. Um, if anyone has any questions for Dr. Cooley, I encourage you to go to his booth, uh, B60, just right over there, um, and he'll be able to have a personal discussion with you. Thank you so much. Thanks very much.